Today on Misty and Ike. The Simpsons. Simpsons. Today is creator Matt Groening's birthday. Groening. It's his birthday. You done good. So we're going to deep dive the Simpsons. We are. I got a list of 50 fun facts you didn't know about the Simpsons and you got... 25 random facts about the Simpsons. And together we have... <laughs> 30 and 50. 75. <laughs> I can't math. Is this the opening? The yeah, intro? Still. This is it. It's long. It is. Let's get into it. Okay. I'm Misty. And I'm Ike. For the next 15 minutes, we're going to debate pop culture. My background's in music. My background's in film. I know the topics beforehand. And I don't. We check the internet for the facts. And ruin it with opinions. From pop rocks in your lunchbox. To Happy Meal toys and swatch clocks. Wow. 146 of them. <laughs> 146. That is only like 6,000 shy of how many Simpsons episodes there are. I was just going to look up how <laughs> many episodes of The Simpsons. There's so many. Isn't it the longest running TV show now? It has been for a while. Yeah. There's 639. That's so many. But you know what? We're going to pass that We're in a year and a half. We're going to pass that in like a year and a half. <laughs> That's like nothing. You know what? You know what this Friday is? Friday? This Friday. Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> Everybody get down on, on Friday. Friday. <laughs> Friday. It's our 150th episode. Shut up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because today's 146. It so, takes, yeah. It takes significantly less to produce an episode of Misty and Ike than it does to make an episode of The Simpsons. Okay, that's fair. I mean, yeah. I understand that, I guess. Are we blowing up? Um. Oh, I don't think that I put my phone. Oh, no, my phone's on silent. Mine is not. So you're blown up. Yes. Now I mean, I'm not silent. to say that we're not equally popular, but... But we are. We are. Not. Um, slaps are on. 15 minutes. Let's okay. get into the facts. All right. Uh, I'll start. When? How old were you when The Simpsons started? Like, do you remember when they came on the air? I think it's 1989. I think it's 87. Um, the opening scene... Maggie uh, used to ring up on the cash register $847.63 because in 1989, that was the estimated price of raising a baby for a month. However, what? the 20th season of the show, which kicked off in 2009, swapped the price of her worth. The groceries start at $243.26, but Maggie doubles the total to $486.52. So when it was introduced, it was how much? Eight hundred and something. It started at eight forty-seven sixty-three, and that's the estimated price of raising a baby for one month in nineteen eighty-nine. And now she types in two hundred and something. Because that's groceries. Oh, just groceries. Yeah, I don't know. Got it. That's that a weird fact to start on. I have a better one. It's a pretty weird one to start on. Yeah, Do you have okay. one. Well, um, you know, it's the creator's birthday, Matt Groening. And he named the characters after his own family. But instead of Matt, he named him Bart. You know Bart's an acronym, right? For Brat. Tarb. Oh, an acronym, not a... Yeah. Or a thingy-mabobber. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so That I, makes sense. I know you don't watch it a lot, but you know that there's a Moe's Tavern. Right? I do. And uh, Bart prank calls Moe's Tavern a lot. Yes, I do know that. The number that he dials when he calls uh, is 764 Eight, Five three oh nine. Yes, <laughs> eight four three seven seven, which is one digit longer than American phone number needs. To be. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't work yeah. in my brain. But it spells out Smithers. Oh, for Mister Smithers, the guy yeah. that runs the plant, the mm -hmm. mean old plant boss. That's right. Do you know why they're yellow? Oh, I just got to that. I don't know why they're yellow. But you just got to that. So I, I'm reading it. <laughs> They're yellow so that when you're flipping the channels, it would be something that was distinctive that would stick out and make you stop on that channel. Oh. Cool, right? You know when Homer says, don't. Yeah. Uh, when it's translated to French, it's to. That's kind of funny. I, that You know, it's really interesting because it's one thing that I've not ever watched in all my travels. Mm -hmm. I've not ever caught a Simpsons episode on the TV. But even if I did, I'd probably bypass it. Yeah. Because just, it's just not ever been my thing. Well, when you translate those into Spanish, mm -hmm. it means ouch. 
That's even funnier. Because, yeah. I mean, doesn't he say dope? Because he's mostly getting hurt. Sometimes? Either he's frustrated or he's hurt or right. yeah, could go for a lot of things. In the Arabic episodes, Homer drinks a soda as opposed to beer and he eats Egyptian beef sausages instead of hot dogs to coincide with Islamic customs. I like that. Mm-hmm. So do they have to reanimate, do they reanimate all of that? For Probably. Each, like reanimate certain things for each market? I'm sure they can afford it. Oh, yeah. You know that our friend Danny Elfman um, composed the show's opening theme song, I right? do know that. Did everybody know that at home? Leave a comment if you know about our boy Danny Elfman. <laughs> uh, did you know that the characters on the show are a digit short of a full human hand? Um, Wait, that what? A digit. These are digits? Yeah. Go back, though. Read the whole thing again. While the characters of the show are a digit short of a full human-like hand. So they only have four. Only one character has ever been given five fingers. Who is that? God. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. I, all right. Okay, I'm getting an email. There we I go. like that. Um, did you know that Bart is voiced by a woman? Yes. You know all my facts. Yeah. I don't like that. Did, well, the, <laughs> the Simpsons was originally a short inside of the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's about Paul McCartney. You ready? Yeah. If you watch the episode Lisa the Vegetarian and listen to the music in the closing credits, Paul McCartney sings Maybe I'm Amazed. But this version contains an added background sound, Maka reading the recipe for lentil soup played backwards. The very last line is said to be, oh, by the way, I'm alive. Oh, my God. In reference to the Paul is dead. Mm -hmm. That's kind of awesome. And he's also like a, a, you know, everyone in the world knows that he's a really strict, strong vegetarian. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. You know how long it takes to make an episode? I don't. How long does it take? It takes between six to eight months to create each episode. One episode? Yeah. And how many episodes are in a season of it? Uh, I believe 24. Is it hmm. normal season by 22 to 24? Hmm. Lisa has celebrated her eighth birthday on two different episodes. I'm not surprised by that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'd be hard to keep track of all of that. Was there a reason that they celebrated it twice? I don't know. Did you know that UC Berkeley has a course that you can take and you get credit for it? The Simpsons. Oh, you I can was take like, a class. Yeah, they have tons of courses that you no, can take. No, you can and get credit take for. a class called The Simpsons. Wow. That's interesting because you could just watch this episode and probably get just as much information. Yeah, no, I think that they, in that class, they go into like the cultural relevance of it and how. The creators have constantly pulled in things that are happening in, you know, the everyday life. Yeah. I want to get into that because they're, they're practically a modern day Nostra dumbass. Oh, you want to get into the, whether he's a time traveler. Yeah. Because there's, and we'll, I'll look this up in a second. There's the math scene that. What's the math scene? I don't know. In the one. intro, Bart's or somewhere, Bart's oh, where he's writing on out, the chalkboard. Yeah, well, in the chalkboard, he's like, "I will not do something like a hundred yeah. times." But yeah. then there's a math sequence on the on the chalkboard in an episode, and it turns out that they just solved that equation like, and it's like to the letter. They just solved it like two years ago, and it's been there since. What? The yeah, it's nuts. Okay, that's um, weird. Did you know George Bush once blamed The Simpsons for society's problems? You know, I do remember uh, in my high school. Um, so I was a freshman, I graduated in 95. Um, we were not allowed to wear Bart Simpson t-shirts because he was a bad role model. Wow. Yeah. Barbara Bush once quoted saying the Simpsons is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And this article says you can read a reply from Marge here. Shall we hear Marge's reply? Yeah, please. Marge Simpson's letter to Barbara Bush. (laughs) This article is no longer available. Oh, man. Man, this is just the content we've been waiting for. Man. Uh, Well, going back to the list. Man, there's a lot of ones on the dough. Dough. Right. I'm reading this cold. While the show's introduction generally sticks to the usual supermarket skateboarding couch stunt, its creators broke a trend for an episode replacing it with a cover of Kesha's TikTok. Her response, a simple tweet of woo. Okay. Interesting. TikTok. Dun, dun, dun. I wonder if she got any credit for like the naming of the app TikTok. Oh, I don't, I don't think. I doubt it. What if Kesha owns TikTok? She doesn't. 
Oh. Um, did you know, do you know who voiced Maggie's first word? Baby Maggie? Uh, was it Matt himself? No. Who was it? It was Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, wow. And she did one word, and that's it, in her voiceover. And the word was daddy. That's interesting. Yeah. Did you know who makes the sucking sound for Maggie? No. That's right. Matt <laughs> Matt himself does it. Okay. <laughs> you want to know what the actors get paid to be on the show? I mean, I would hope that they make more now than they did when it started. Well, that's correct. <laughs> until 1998, the six main vo- voice actors for the show earned $30,000 per episode. From then until 2004, they earned $125,000 per episode. Today, they get a whopping 400,000 pounds per episode. Holy crap. I don't know why it went from dollars. Why did it go from dollars to pounds? It's but... probably a British article that has a typo in it. Okay. <laughs> Do you know who Hank Azaria is? Yes. Okay. So... He's done a, a lot of his own acting bits and stuff, um, but he's most known for doing voices on The Simpsons. Do you know that he has supplied the voice for 16 different characters? What? He's done Mo the Bartender, Chief Wiggum, the convenience store owner, Apu, mm-hmm. and then a whole bunch more. 16 different characters. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that cool. Nuts. Um, I'm I'm now seeing what you were talking about in high school. One piece of Simpsons merchandise, a t-shirt reading, I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you, was apparently banned from public schools. We couldn't wear any Simpsons t-shirts, though. It wasn't just that specific one. It was any. We were not allowed to wear any of them. Did you know... Okay, so Nancy Cartwright is the woman's voice behind Bart. Mm-hmm. In 1990, do you remember the song Do the Bart Man? Yeah, totally. It topped the UK singles chart. Do you know who it was written by? I don't. You want to guess? What year was it? 1990. Take a wild guess and and like go huge. Elton John. Michael Jackson. Do the Bartman was written by Michael Jackson. And Brian Lauren. I don't know who that is. I have no idea who that is. Um, I that's weird. That's really weird. Who who sang it? It wasn't Michael Jackson that sang it, was it? No, it was it was performed by Nancy. Oh, sorry, I missed that part. Um, very strange. Uh, Principal Skinner's prison number in Vietnam two four six zero one. That just went dark. Well, it's the same prison number in, in, as Twin Peaks Hank Jennings <gasps> and Les Misérables Jean Valjean. Two, they two four six zero one. Twin Peaks into the Simpsons. With Les Mis. That's incredible. Twin Peaks is one of my favorite shows ever. Krusty's former sidekick, uh, Sideshow Bob, also has that very same prison number, which can be seen on his letters to Selma back when they were married for a short period of time. I don't know who Selma was. and it's his former wife. Yeah. I'm... Sideshow Bob, his real name is Robert Underdunk Terwing, Terwillinger. Do you want to know some celebrities that have turned down guest starring roles on it? That have said no. Yeah. That's okay. Pass. Bruce Springsteen. Bob Dylan. Michael Caine. Wow. Tom Cruise. Michael Caine. Clint Eastwood. Anthony Hopkins. Quentin Tarantino. And Prince. Wow. Mm-hmm. While well, Lisa's first word was Bart and Maggie's first word, like you said, was Daddy. The first words out of young Bart's mouth were, I carumba. Is that what he said or was it? I thought he always said cowabunga. He's, yeah, but not that. But that his, his first very words. Very first words. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just wasn't sure. I was like, do I remember that wrong? Oh. Whoa. Weird. Okay. The two alien characters that come down in the spaceship all the time, Kang and Kodos, are named after characters from Star Trek, the original series, where Kang is a Klingon warrior and Kodos is a mass murderer. That sounds about right. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. Um, I think that this is really, a, like, a really, really cool fact. So there's a showrunner, of course. His name is Al, Al Jean. <clears throat> he did an article with the Onions AV Club website um, and said that if the series ever ends... He wants the final episode to end with 
the arrival of the Christmas pageant from the first scene in the pilot episode mm-hmm. so that it would make the whole series a continuous loop. Oh. Isn't that cool? Like Groundhog's Day. Right. Yeah. Right. Did you know? That's super awesome. That's super rad. Uh, Frazier's Kelsey Grammer is the voice behind Sideshow Bob, while Frazier's David Hyde Pierce... <laughs> I love him. His provides brother. the voice for Cecil, Sideshow Bob's brother. I love that. Oh my God. Because they're David Hyde Pierce and Kelsey Grammer are brothers on yeah. Frasier. And so they provide the voices of brothers. And it goes one level deeper than that. Oh shit. Their father, Dr. Robert Terwillinger. Terwillinger. Was it voiced by their dad? John Mahoney, who <gasps> plays the father on Frasier. Oh, rest in peace, John Mahoney. Oh, how oh fun is God. that? That's incredible. I love that man. So, so, so much. And, I mean, to take it one step further than that, we have some personal ties to Dr. Fre- Frazier. We do. It's not out yet. <laughs> no. But stay tuned. Well, will it be out by the time? Nope. I mean, he he aired some of it live on his Instagram when totally, he was shooting it. Totally. So. <laughs> totally. Yeah. But stay tuned to the Brickyard Media Group Network exactly. for more Frasier content. More things. They're also... <laughs> Paramount announced that they're thinking about bringing it back. I did. I read that last week. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm going to... All right. The, the facts are fun, but I want to get into the um, craziness of how they've been able to Keep this nail going stuff down. for yeah. this long. How do, what's the best way to Google that? Simpsons predictions. Oh, right. The how Matt Groening Yeah. 15 is. times the Simpsons predicted the future. Well, the one that comes to mind very recently is they had a bit with a female politician who was wearing a string of pearls and a purple dress <laughs> as she accepted her place into whatever it was that she ran for, which very closely mirrored Kamala Harris mm-hmm. as vice president. Only the Simpsons version of it was like 10 years ago. Yeah. So here is... ah. We're going into bonus time. Yeah. So, The Simpsons has an eerie knack for predicting the future. From Donald Trump's presidency to the U.S. beating Sweden for an Olympic gold medal in curling, here are 14 times the long-running comedy series got it right. Lady Gaga on the episode of Lisa Goes Gaga. Lady Gaga is shown suspended by cables flying over the audience at a concert. Well, surprise, surprise, because at the Super Bowl whatever number that is, halftime show, Gaga descended from the stadium's roof with suspension cables wearing pretty much the same outfit on her episode. She sure did. 2016 Nobel Prize winner. In 2010 episode, Milhouse predicted that Banget R. Holmstrom would win the Nobel Prize in economics. Sure enough, in 2016, Holmstrom and Oliver Hart were announced as joint winners of the prize. So weird. Siegfried and Roy, Tiger Attack. In 1993, Mm. an episode titled uh, Springfield, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Legalized Gambling, Magicians in Siegfried and Roy like show got attacked by their trustworthy tiger. In 2003, Roy was attacked by one of their white tigers during a live performance. He sustained injuries but lived. So weird. Arnold Palmer. On the 28th season premiere, the satirical series made an Arnold Palmer joke on the day that golfer Arnold Palmer died. Homer Simpson tells his wife Marge that he plans to Arnold Palmer his pal Lenny. Arnold Palmer Lenny? Marge responds, you're going to Arnold Palmer Lenny. He was one of, of, of course, referring to the lemonade and iced tea mixture drink, which uh, was named after the golfer. And, and Weird. Homer had it in like a super soaker. Right. Uh, f- f- faulty voting machine. During the 2012 elections, Ugh. a voting machine proved faulty when uh, votes cast for Barack Obama went to Mitt Romney instead. In a 2008 episode, uh, which was four years earlier, Homer Simpson went to the voting booths to cast a vote for Obama, but his vote went to McCain instead. <sighs> oh, here's the one about the math episode. Okay. Higgs Boston. In a 1998 episode, The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace, Homer writes out an equation on a chalkboard, which, if solved, you get the mass of a Higgs Boston that's only a bit larger than the nano mass of a Higgs Boston actually is, says Simon Singh, science officer, science author. I don't know what any of the words are that you just said. So the higgs boson equation is how to calculate the mass of... A higgs boson. Of a nano mass, which is smaller than oh. a molecule. Okay. That's insane to me. Yeah, and it's correct 
on the chalkboard. That's insane. Horse meat scandal. In 1994, an episode titled Sweet Seymour Skinner's Badass Song, the lunch lady was seen reaching into a barrel labeled assorted horse parts and putting the meat into the school's lunch pot. In 2013, it was reported that traces of horse DNA were found in beef products across the UK. Yeah. W- wasn't that what started um, Mad Cow? Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Guitar Hero. The now basically extinct but once popular video game Guitar Hero was first released in 2005, but in 2002, the Simpsons episode, uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards gave Homer a jacket that has Guitar Hero printed on the back. Well, all right. That Uh, that doesn't really count. Guitar Hero comes also from Jukebox Hero, which was a song written in the 70s. Yeah. So... Uh, Farmville, the virtual reality game. Farmville was all the craze in 2009 with people rushing home from work and school to tend to their farm. In a 1998 episode, The Simpsons Show is a scene where kids actually play in a yard work simulator. And eh, that's a stretch. That's a stretch, but yeah. Old Beatles letters. In season two's episode 18, Brush with Greatness, Ringo Starr from The Beatles is shown responding to fan letters while saying, they took the time to write me and I don't care if it takes me another 20 years, I'm going to answer every one of them. Well... Two women in England received a reply to their fan mail from Sir Paul McCartney 50 years later. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. I don't know how that ties Ringo. But whatever. Smart wow. watches. Sorry, Apple, but the Simpsons had smart watches first. In a 1995 episode in which the show set in the future, Lisa's husband is shown speaking into a phone on his wrist. The first smart watch wasn't created until 2013. It does look like they just strapped a flip phone to his arm. But in 1995, they didn't really have big cell phones anyway. Disney owned Fox back in 1998. A quick scene of The Simpsons showed 20th Century Fox as a division of Walt Disney Company. In March uh, 2019, Disney completed its uh, $71.3 billion acquisition of 21st Century Fox's film and TV assets. How many more we got here? Three. We got three more. Okay. U.S. wins an Olympic gold medal in curling. In 2010, Homer and Marge beat Sweden and took home the Olympic (laughs) gold medal for Team USA in mixed match curling. As the animated sportscaster said, open your history books, tear out the pages, and put this incredible Olympic moment in. I guess they won two. Okay. Murder hornets and coronavirus. Oh, God. In, 19, in a 1993 episode, a Japanese factory worker accidentally spreads the contagious Osaka flu <gasps> to Springfield. And in the town, uh, people's... Rush to find a cure. They accidentally knock over a van with killer bees inside. The spread of murder hornets in America has coincided with the coronavirus in 2020. The coincidence was first noted by the former Simpsons writer Bill Oakley. And last but not least, Donald Trump presidency in an episode from 2000 titled Bart to the Future that flashes back... Bart to the future that flashes forward to the future. Lisa becomes the first straight female president that takes over after Donald Trump, who ruined the economy. So clearly, Matt Gronig is a time space traveler. Yes. All that reading hurt my head. I understandably. It hurts my head wrapping around the fact that they were able to predict so many of those things. Yeah. And I bet if you. Without. Yeah. I bet if you dove a little deeper, you could probably find a few more. <laughs> I'm sure. Than that. Yeah, absolutely. It's real weird. Well, folks, uh, do your own deep dive on The Simpsons. Tell us what your favorite Simpsons fact is. Don't forget, you can listen to us on audio if you can't watch us on the video platforms. And that's it for episode 146. Yep. And as long as it's not Friday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.